to you abundantly whoever is here and uh, god bless you whoever is joining us online this is the uh, king jesus love of house of peace uh, and this house of peace is under king jesus dallas in the lubbock area uh, pastors pastor daniel and carolina sandoval and god bless you abundantly as you join us uh, take your papers and pens. I believe that the Lord is going to speak to you today. The Lord is going to bless each and every one of us today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The topic today is we reflect outwardly what we are inwardly. What you say, what you do, what people hear is a reflection of what is in your heart. As the Bible declares that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you're a believer, uh, yes, people should see the fruit of what is in your heart. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen? Amen. In James 1, verse 19 to 20. Uh, if you have your Bible, just go with me to James 1, 19 to 20. As we start this teaching, we uh, have a chance to worship, we uh, have a chance to minister to whoever is here, whoever is online. God bless you abundantly. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to bless you abundantly. Um, whoever is sick, that you're going to be healed. If it is uh, in your soul, Christ came to heal the brokenhearted. Amen? To heal the brokenhearted. To bind up our wounds. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement, the broke peace was upon him by his stripes. We are healed. That means in spirit, in the soul, and in the body. That is the will of God to make us whole, to restore each and every one of us to wholeness in Jesus' mighty name. So the healing is not just physical. A lot of people talk about the scripture as though Christ came to just heal the body. No, the healing is total total restoration that we prosper in all things be in good health even as our souls prosper hallelujah somebody amen it is the will of god his plans are of peace and not of evil but to prosper us and give us a hope and an expected future and that includes your spirit and your soul your body hallelujah somebody and the hope of our salvation is none other than jesus jesus the christ hallelujah the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through him. So go with me to James chapter 1, verse uh, 19 to 20. If you have your Bibles, you online. Uh, bless you, we bless you. God bless you abundantly. Uh, you have come at such a right time. Now more than ever, we need Christ. We need the Holy Spirit. We need a refreshment. We need a refreshing, the refreshing of the Holy Spirit. And yes, it starts with repentance. If you have not been in the presence of God, maybe you're straight away from God. The Bible declares, let us repent, therefore, and be converted. Converted means to be transformed. To repent is to turn away from sin and unrighteousness. Repent, therefore, and be converted. That your sins, your sins, my sins, may be blotted out. And that times of refreshing, hallelujah. That word refreshing means the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit to come from the princes of God. Praise the Son of the living God. To refresh us. Oh, how many of you know that even in this season, this time, as we get close to the day of Pentecost, the season of Pentecost is very important. The feast of Pentecost is very important in a believer's life. Praise the Son of the living God. Somebody. All the disciples were in the upper room having uh, uh, obeyed Christ. When Christ said, go into Jerusalem in the upper room and wait you shall receive power from on high when the Holy Spirit has come upon you praise God that's what we should be doing repenting they were repenting they were praying they were seeking God and guess what times of refreshing came from the presence of God hallelujah somebody in the presence of God is a fullness of joy in the presence of God is peace. In the presence of God is love. For God is love. And right there, we bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Because when there is an appearing of the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit does is to work in our hearts and purify us. Praise the Son of the living God. Somebody. Amen. 
James 1, verse 19 to 20. If you have your Bibles, James 1, 19 to 20. Now, it doesn't mean that you won't go through trials and tribulations. We will go through trials and tribulations. And precisely, that's why we need refreshing as we go through trials and tribulations. Who strengthens us? Who helps us to overcome those trials and tribulations? Who helps us to overcome the temptations? It is Jesus Christ, and it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, somebody. So then, my beloved brethren, in James 1, 19, it says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Amen? So we should be slow to speak, swift to hear, slow to speak. In other words, listen. Slow to speak, slow to wrath. I'm talking about anger. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. The Lord wants us to be humble, to listen. Yes, even not only to listen to God, of course, we are called to listen to God first. Praise God. For if you have an ear, a spiritual ear that listens to God, then you will be humbled and then you are going to be able to listen to others. Praise God. For the heart of Christ is lowly. It is humble. Amen? And when we have a humble heart, we're going to be able to listen to others. Praise God. In Jesus' mighty name. Merciful God, we thank you for this time that you've given us. King of glory, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. There are those who are not yet born again that do not have the gift of the Holy Spirit that comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Holy Spirit, that you would speak to each and every one of us. That you would touch the hurts of men where there were hurts of stone to be hurts of flesh. In Jesus' mighty name, that we may bear fruit, that we may be pruned to bear more fruit. For the fruit is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way in me. Have your way in each and every one of us. King of glory, use me as a vessel to speak to this. Hear your people. In Jesus' mighty name. That you would write even the word that we are sharing today on the tablets of our hearts. Lord, we repent of anything we may have said or done or thought or seen or heard. Any sins of omission or commission. Lord Jesus, we repent. We repent before you, God. Lord, we ask that you forgive us and you will sanctify us with your precious blood. That blood that was shed on the cross as of a lamb with us for the blemish. But that if there is anybody that does not know you to come to the revelation of Christ, Holy Spirit, that you'd reveal Christ to each and every one of us. That we may move from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith, from anointed to anointed, from glory to glory, into the glorious image of Christ. To be conformed in the image of the Son of God, in the image of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, I thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let us start by worshiping the King of Kings. For those of you who are not yet believers, Christ died on the cross for you and I. For your sins and my sins and the sins of the whole world. Hallelujah. Pay the price as of the Lamb of us for a blemish. That we may be set free from sin and unrighteousness. Hallelujah, somebody. And so I believe... That even as we are, uh, we are sharing, that the Lord is speaking to you today. And God bless you abundantly in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, can we have some worship music? We are going to start with worship in the name that is above name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So we worship Jesus Christ. He was crucified for your sins and my sins as a man, that we may be set free, that we may be reconciled to our Heavenly Father. Only through Christ are we saved. Hallelujah, somebody. Are we born again? And we receive the promise of the Holy Spirit by faith to worship Him in spirit and truth, to pray in the Spirit. And I believe that even those that have not yet received Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, you're going to receive Christ after this message. God bless you, Abba.
Heavenly Father, worthy are you, Lamb of God, that was slain for the forgiveness of our sins. We continue to worship in the song. As we worship the King of Glory, yes, the King of Kings, the Lamb of God that was slain for the forgiveness of our sins. Holy God, Holy Man, as the Lamb died on the cross for your sins and my sins, hallelujah, that we may be reconciled to God, to Himself, hallelujah. Oh, that's a mystery. None of us understand it. But the Son of God is one with the Father.
Spirit, the Ruach of God. The Ruach of God, the Ruach of God. Yes, Lord, the Ruach Elohim. This, the word um, in Hebrew for Holy Spirit, the breath of God, is the Ruach. The Ruach of God. As we get into the season of Pentecost, we are pouring the Holy Spirit every season of Pentecost. Uh, we don't observe, observe these feasts or these seasons as uh, religion does and Judaism they observe the same season but they observe it the old covenant way do you observe it uh, the new covenant way understanding that Jesus Christ is the, the one who baptizes us with Holy Spirit and fire and that yes the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire is that the Holy Spirit would write the Word of God on the tablets of our hearts now the people in Judaism they celebrate it the law of Moses uh, because that is at the same time when God spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai and gave them Moses the Ten Commandments but we understand that the Ten Commandments written on the tablets of stone in the Old Covenant is not uh, the same as uh, the Holy Spirit who writes the Word of God on the tablets of our hearts summarized in two to love God with all our hearts with all our minds with all our strength to love our neighbors even as we love ourselves Ten Commandments were summarized by Christ in two. And it is Christ who is love, God is love, who writes that on our hearts. My friend, I pray that God blesses you with that revelation. One of the things that distinguishes a believer from a non-believer is the way we speak, the way we act, and the way we conduct ourselves, how we behave. These are character traits that were evident in the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. He represented God, Heavenly Father, the image of the invisible God, Emmanuel, with us. He was very intentional to instill this into the lives of his disciples. And that's why all who believe in Christ must have the character of Christ, must bear fruit. And that fruit, my friend, is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It comes from knowing Christ in the Spirit, being born again. It's not about religion. It's not about your denomination or your religion, but a relationship with Christ. So Christ was very intentional to instill this into the lives of his disciples. And all of us who believe in Christ, who believe the gospel as written in the Bible by those early disciples, one went to perdition, by the other 11 to who one was added unto them, and the 120 in the upper room were obedient, received the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and moved on to write, inspired by the Holy Spirit, what we now teach hallelujah and we are to pass it on and as the holy spirit leads the power of the holy spirit did not stop on the day of pentecost it continues even today hallelujah somebody it is that which christ said that this sign shall follow those that believe they shall speak in new tongues they shall cast out demons that's why i was speaking tongues not a voice but it's a sign praise god and i pray that if you do not speak in tongues that the holy spirit will give you a new tongue from heaven that special tongue not all people speak the same tongue there's a special tongue for each and every one of us praise the son of living god somebody from god almighty and i believe that when you receive christ you're going to receive that if you have received christ and do not speak in tongues yet i pray that the holy spirit will give you an impartation supernatural impartation that you would move to that level let us desire the gifts for the gifts are of the holy spirit and they are for us praise god although they did not receive this revelation of uh, what Christ had spoken and Christ told them is that I cannot um, tell you everything now because you will not be able to discern or receive them but I'll send you a comforter a counselor who will teach you all things the person of the Holy Spirit hallelujah somebody I'm gonna ask someone from this house to read from John 16 12 to 15 Jude can you come and read from John 16 and if you have your Bibles John 16 at verse 12 to 15 and ask you to come closer, please, so that the people online can hear. God bless you abundantly. Uh, in Jesus' mighty name. So although they did not receive this revelation during their early stages as believers, the disciples we're talking about, but we see a drastic change in them after their upper room experience when there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, somebody. Somebody say, I need an upper room experience in this time. And it is this season 
as we head into the uh, Pentecost season, the Lord is going to give you an, an easy anointing because the things, my friend, that are coming ahead of us, those things you'll not be able to overcome if you do not have the Holy Spirit. Now, you may have received the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but you need more. The Bible declares that us hunger and thirst for more. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And that if any man thirst, let him come to me, to Christ. For whoever believes in me, Christ saying, out of the innermost being shall flow, flow rivers of living water. The flowing means that you have more than enough, and there is an overflow. Hallelujah. Praise the Son of the living God. More than enough. You need what you need to keep you in Christ, but you also need that to come out so that other people who do not know Christ may be able to receive Christ. And it is the person of the Holy Spirit, the overflowing of the Holy Spirit that helps us to do what we are called to do. Hallelujah, somebody. In Jesus' mighty name. Go ahead, Jude. It is John chapter 16, verse 12 to 15. For I have many things to say to you, but when you cannot, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. Whatever he bears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. And all things that the Father has in mind. Therefore I said, and he will take of mine and declare it to you. Amen. So they could not bear what Christ wanted to tell them at that point because they had character flows. That's where we are going. They still heard, oh, who is the greatest in the kingdom? I think one of the disciples asked Christ when Christ was still on earth, who is the greatest in the kingdom? All of them were clamoring to sit right next to, to, to Christ because they had a pride thing. They wanted uh, the, the, the small, you know, uh, what we see today, the pride thing whereby, oh, I am the greatest. I have more power, I have more anointing. Even in the kingdom, those kinds of things uh, happen. And so in order for you to be able to serve in the kingdom of God, you must be humbled. That's why Christ said, if any man wants to come into the kingdom of God, let him come as a child. Praise the son of the living God, somebody. And so Christ needed to work in them. And that was the appearing of the Holy Spirit when the mighty rushing wind came in the upper room and yes, swept away everything to do with pride and every character flows. And guess what? They received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, first tongues of fire, the tongues of fire to purify them. And then they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Son of the living God. Somebody. And so that is what, yes, in Matthew 3, 11 to 12, they say that uh, um, the Word of God declares that uh, I believe it was John the Baptist who said that I baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who comes up to me is greater than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Praise the Son of the living God. Somebody. Amen. And so Christ baptizes us with the Holy Spirit and fire, and the purpose of it for the believer who is yielding is that we may be sanctified by the fire of God's word, the fire of the Holy Spirit, and that we may be filled with the Holy Spirit. God cannot fill you with the Holy Spirit if you have you know, things like, oh, who's the greatest? I am the greatest. Pride, lust of the eyes of the flesh of our heart, hatred, bitterness, anger. Those are character flaws that are not in agreement with God, with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. God loves us and wants to fill us, but yes, must first cleanse us. Hallelujah, somebody. You must first go through the fire, the cleansing fire. Praise the Son of the God. In fact, in Matthew 3, 11, 12, it says, He's winnowing fun in his, is in his hand to clean out his threshing flow. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. And to gather his wheat in his barn. Praise God. And to burn the shop, blow away the shop. The shop is those things, for those of you who are familiar with farming, if you have, uh, have harvested wheat, yes, there's going to be shop, there's going to be things, there's going to be husk. You need to take those husks off and burn them and get the wheat in the burn, in the store. Praise the Son of the living God. And the harvest truly is plentiful, Christ said, but the laborers are few. But that we only need to pray that the Lord of the harvest may send laborers in his harvest. This is the time of the harvest. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Praise the Son of the living God. Thank you, Jesus. So in the preceding verses of James, James uh, 1, 19 to 20, I think before, James points out several character flaws. 
that if not dealt with, it can lead to disastrous results. It will stop you or hinder you from walking upon the will of God. These are temptations from the enemy. You're tempted to do things that are not right. I think in verse 12 it says, Blessed are those who overcome temptations, for they shall be found approved and shall wear a crown of righteousness. Hallelujah. But he talks about pride, he talks about doubt. A double-minded person cannot receive what they ask for because they doubt. They have a double mind. Today they believe, today they don't believe. The other day they don't believe. They have lack of faith, they don't have faith. They lack wisdom. And Christ said, if any man lack wisdom in the word of God through James, let them ask of, ask of the Lord who gives freely, liberally, without finding fault. So we have learned in the past lessons that we've been having thus far that we are who we are according to the condition of our heart. So what is the condition of your heart? Ask yourself. Examine your heart. Is my heart right before God? Where we ought to be right before God. And who sanctifies us? Who helps us to be right before God? That is the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is for the purpose of sanctifying us, purifying us, so that we may be pure and holy, even as God is holy. Christ is holy. He who has called us is holy. He says, be ye holy because I am holy hallelujah somebody that we may walk in righteousness through christ our lord and our savior and god made the christ who knew no sin to become sin for us that we may become the righteousness of god in him only in christ my friend are we made righteous so how can we be free from those things that war against our soul we know that this is a spiritual war against our soul the enemy fights for our soul much as god is fighting for our soul and he is the shepherd and overseer of our soul for as long as we let him take over praise god but if we ha have room for the enemy to come in through anger bitterness unforgiveness anything then we're going to have a bad testimony so when we are uh, given to uh, these the, the enemy we will give a bad testimony of who we are in christ even as believers yes you can't be a believer filled with the holy spirit yet harbor other things and that's the sheriff that god wants to deal with the bitterness, the anger, the unforgiveness, the envy, jealousy, gossip, everything. Everyone has their own weaknesses. And my friend, this is not to judge or condemn you. Christ did not come to judge or condemn anybody, but to call sinners to repentance. God does not desire that anybody perish, but that we all come to full repentance. Hallelujah, Samba. Now, the unbeliever is changed by the fruit. What fruit we bear, praise God. If it is bad fruit, of course, it's going to lead them astray. But if it is good fruit, and Christ said, abide in me, I mean you, that is the only way you can bear fruit. Praise God. And we're talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When we abide in Christ, we'll bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit because through Christ, we receive the promise of the Holy Spirit by faith. What must we do in order for us to change? We must acknowledge that we need to change. It starts with acknowledging those things that are in our hearts that are not right before God and saying, Lord, I know that, yes, I have anger. I know that I have issues. And whatever issue that you have, but Holy Spirit, help me to overcome this issue. Amen? Many times we do not see the need to change unless someone points it out. Yes, sometimes God will send men and women of God to point out some of those things. I've been in those situations and the Holy Spirit convicted me through men of God. And, and I, I repented before God. Praise God. So this can be an uncomfortable situation since most people will not approach us on this topic. But when God sends people to confront us, yes, we must recognize that and we must repent before God. And not be disobedient or rebellious or even offended when uh, God speaks to us through others or directly. I mean, God can speak directly. God speaks directly to our spirit. And we can be convicted and you feel convicted. I know that I know that I know that what I'm doing is wrong. Lord, forgive me. Unless you're simply stubborn and rebellious and you don't want to change. If we are honest and sincere with ourselves and desire to reflect the character of Christ, the Holy Spirit will gently speak to our hearts. And if we are listening to him, yes, and heed. Not just hear, but heed what the Holy Spirit is saying. Do what the Holy Spirit is saying. We are going to be transformed. Hallelujah. Somebody. I want to ask someone from this house. Uh, Molly, can you read Psalm uh, 
uh, 51 verse 2 and 3, please. And as you get ready, Christ said in John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Let us hear what God is saying. Let us follow, not just hear, but do what Christ is saying, what the Holy Spirit is saying. Christ said these words, I do not do what I do not see my Father doing in heaven. I do not say what I do not hear my Father saying in heaven. Hallelujah, somebody. And therefore, in order for us to have the character of Christ, we should emulate Christ, our Lord and our Savior, for we follow Christ. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name. And Romans 12, 10, 1 to 2 says, uh, 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 that I beseech you therefore, by the mercies of God, it is the mercy of God, that you present your bodies. Know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Do you know that we are a living sacrifice? On a daily basis as believers, you know We are a living sacrifice. You must sacrifice. Yes, the, your friends are going out to a party. Yes, your friends are going out to uh, some club or, some, or do uh, whatever it is that is not right. Do not do that. But there are some times when it's not about sin. It's about you seeking God. If you, ought to, you know you ought to pray and fast, it is a sacrifice. Being before God is a sacrifice. Uh, teaching the word of God as I'm doing, preaching, doing anything for the kingdom of God is a sacrifice. It requires a sacrifice. And sometimes it's very uncomfortable. God will send you to places which are not comfortable at all. And God wants you to do that as a sacrifice. Praise God. Christ said there is no greater love than this than to lay down one's life for others. So Christ sacrificed his life for each and every one of us. And therefore, in order for us to emulate that same character, he wants us to lay down our lives for others, praise God, however and comfortable. So let us present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord, that which is a reasonable service. Not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, that we may know that which is a good, acceptable and perfect will of God. God bless you. Psalm 51, verse 2 to 3. No, more, no 23. Did I say? Yeah, 51, verse 2 to 3. Go ahead. Completely wash away my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. For I am conscious of my rebellion and my sin is always before me. Mm -hmm. So you should be conscious of your rebellion and that sin that is before you. And submit it to God. Amen? Present your body as a living sacrifice. Also in Hebrews 12, 1 2 says, let us lay aside every weight, every weight and sin that so easily ensnares us. Do not hold on to that baggage. I was watching a video of somebody, uh, 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 one of these TikTok things, and, and they had a bag, a backpack, and that backpack was open, and the pastor was demonstrating that this is what happens in the spirit. Fear in the backpack. Anger in the backpack. Uh, worried about money in the backpack. Bitterness, anger, name it. And this pastor ran with this pastor who had a backpack to the finish line. This is the one. Obviously, the one with the backpack would not, would, and the representation of that was in the physical, but it was a demonstration of what happens in the spirit. So the one with the backpack, heavy backpack, could not make it to the finish line. That's why in Hebrews 12, 1 to 2, he says that let us lay aside every weight, every weight, the cares, the worries, and sin, yes, sin that so easily ensnares us, that we, we may run this race that is set before us with endurance. You cannot endure in the race, in the faith, the good fight of faith, the race for gold, the race for the crown of glory, the race for the crown of righteousness, the race for the crown of life. You cannot endure in that race if you have that baggage. But if you look to Jesus, who is the author and the finish of our faith, you and I, will finish the race, and that is through faith. Christ is the author and the finish of our faith, and that's one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that the Lord is working in each and every one of us, even right now. Amen? Amen? For faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. I pray that this Word will strengthen you in the faith, in Jesus' mighty name, in the most holy faith, to run this race with endurance, looking to Jesus, who is the author and the finish of our faith, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith who has promised that he will perfect that which concerns us he will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him hallelujah samba number two repent for allowing the enemy to deceive you to deceive us we should repent all of us 
Because a lot of times we allow the enemy to deceive us. We make room for the enemy to come in and deceive us. It is easy to get caught up with the worries and daily tasks of family, work, finances, ministry, and neglect our own personal lives. Oh yeah, even ministry can be a baggage if you do not take care of yourself and you think that all you have to do is just ministry, ministry, ministry. Or oh, even if it's family, you put family first, work, finances, that can be a baggage if you don't give that to Christ. I'm not saying that neglect to take care of your family or neglect to work, neglect to, to uh, deal with the issues of finances or even do ministry, but take care of yourself first because if you minister with a character that is flawed, out of anger or bitterness, you're not going to be able to minister to others. Amen? You're going to be imparting in others your bitterness and anger. You're going to be imparting in others hatred. You're going to be imparting in others things that are not right, garbage that you carry on your back. So when we repent with all our hearts, the process of healing, restoration, empowerment begins. The Holy Spirit will never anoint and empower attitudes and conduct that are not aligned with the Word of God. Amen? It can only work with a person that is transformed, that is changed, willing to surrender their will to the will of the Heavenly Father. That's why Christ said, when we pray, let us come before God, reversing God, saying, hallowed be thy name. That word hallowed means honor and glory be to your name, Heavenly Father. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. Here on earth, even as it is in heaven. Amen? And that's precisely what Christ did on the cross. And that's what we do as believers on a daily basis. Stay faithful to the process. It is a process. A lot of people don't want to go through the process. They think their transformation is going to change, do, be overnight. Oh, it's a process. The Lord will have to deal with your mindset, your habits, your behavioral patterns. Uh, and, and, and some people resist the change because they do not want uh, to go through the process. But it is a process. It requires staying in the Word of God. Yes, sometimes praying, fasting, worshiping God, coming before God on a daily basis, seeking the presence of God. And as we seek the presence of God, we are transformed. We are transformed from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith. Amen? However, many never see the victory because they think that change happens overnight. Regardless of the many encounters we may have had with God's presence. You may have, a, have had a presence in a conference yesterday. And yes, God moved mightily. And I even used you. But every day is not the same. There's going to be all kinds of temptations that the enemy, who doesn't stop tempting, even tempted Christ. Listen, my friend. The Bible declares that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. God, Christ, the son of a living God, who is also God. But as a man, yes, was tempted. He was God. A lot of people don't forget that Christ was, yes, God, the son of God. And, and, and yes, there was a man part. That man part of him, the human part of him suffered. The human part of him cried. The human part of him was tempted even as we are in all points. Cried in the Garden of Gethsemane. Christ had to submit his will as a man to the will of the Heavenly Father. So it is with all of us, praise God. So much as, yes, it was Emmanuel with us, God in Christ, but the man part of Christ had to learn to submit to the God part. <laughs> and that's a mystery, the God part of himself. Praise the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Praise the Son of the living God. The Lamb of God that was slain for the forgiveness of our sins, yes, suffered pain on that cross. Real pain. A pain like you will suffer pain when they beat you up. More pain because that wrath, I would like to think that the suffering that Christ had on the cross because he was suffering for the wrath of every human being that was ever created, would ever, will ever be created, was more painful than any other pain. It wasn't the regular pain. I do believe, 100%. Suffered on the cross, died and was raised from the dead for your sins and my sins, that we may be saved. Amen? So regardless of the many encounters we may have with his presence, the Lord is constantly working with our hearts, character and personality, and our personal conduct. Let us be accountable to those in authority over us. The Bible clearly says that being accountable is essential for our growth and well-being. If you're not accountable to the authorities that the Lord has put over you, that is, does not necessarily mean mentors, deacons, or elders, or pastors, or apostles, prophets that the Lord has put over you, even though that's a part of it. 
but outside of a teachers, supervisors, your parents, children, don't be disobedient or rebellious to parents. Law enforcement, law enforcement, yes, even the president, you may not agree with the president, pray for the president. The Bible calls for us to pray for all our leaders, present our prayers and supplications for all men and intercessions for all those in authority, kings and all those in authority, that we may lead a peaceable life with all godliness and reverence. My friend, that is a spiritual kingdom principle. And so when we pray for the presidents, for the leaders, despite the fact that we may not agree with their policies, God changes them. The children of Israel suffered under Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, yes, tortured them, did all kinds of things, just like Pharaoh, but in the times of Babylon, under uh, Nebuchadnezzar, and, and children of Israel suffering in Babylon, God instructed them to pray for the peace of their cities. The peace of their cities and that means even the peace of their leaders because if you don't pray for the peace of your leader uh, how will, are you going to have peace in your city and so regardless of how harsh even your leaders are pray for them because it is god who created each and every one of them and god desires that all men be saved and there's only one man who reconciles men unto god and that is jesus christ our lord and our savior hallelujah somebody so being accountable to authority is a biblical principle that keeps us aligned to the order of the kingdom, as well as providing a covering to monitor your spiritual growth. In order to effectively reflect the character of Christ in our life, change must begin in our hearts. Revival. A lot of people are crying out for revival in the church circles. We're crying out for revival. Praise God. But how many of you know that revival starts from your heart? From your heart, my heart. Praise God. God cannot bring revival if our hearts are not right. We must have revival in our hearts. King David understood that, that mystery in Psalm 119. He talked constantly about the revival of the heart. We all have family, friends, and co-workers that we would love to see come to the feet of Christ. But do they see Jesus in us? Do they see Jesus in you and I? Is our behavior, speech, attitude, those that reflect Christ, that, does that, 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 that reflect Christ to them? How do they see us respond to the trials and tribulations, the temptations? Today there's been COVID, there's been wars and rumors of war. If we are fearful, and God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power love and a soul mind, the rest of the world is also going to be fearful. The church ought to arise and shine, to awake from slumber, that Christ may give us light. And so these deficiencies reflect the exact opposite of what the Bible calls the righteousness of God. Let us not be a part of the lawlessness. Christ said, because of lawlessness, the love of many will turn cold. But that he who endures to the end shall be saved. Amen? Amen. So the Christian life, my friend, is one of constant change, growth, and maturity. We move from strength to strength, from faith to faith, from anointing to anointing, from glory to glory as we behold the glory of Christ the image of Christ are transformed into that same glorious image because God created you in his image. Praise God. And Christ is the image of the invisible God that we may be transformed and conformed to the image of the Son of God is by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is not by man's, man's hands. Praise God. But by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the very hand of God. Hallelujah. As the kingdom of God is always expanding, so must our lives reflect that expansion. First inward in our hearts and then outwardly what people see. Thessalonians, first Thessalonians 5.23 as I close. And the very God of peace, may the God of peace sanctify you and I wholly in spirit, in soul and in body. May he preserve us blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. My friend, if you have not yet accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, now is the time to repent. Do not wait, my friend. Do not wait. For time is running out. Amen? Now is the time. Now more than ever. Again, repent thereupon. Be converted. The Bible declares from the Word of God. And be converted that your sins, my sins, however big your sins are, it doesn't matter what you did in the past, Christ came to call sinners to repentance. Pay the price for that very purpose. Christ pay the price on the cross that your sins may be forgiven. So this is not to judge or condemn you, my friend. 
out of love. Christ paid the price for your sins and my sins. Hallelujah. Laid down his life for each and every one of us as a man. That we may be set free and be reconciled to God, to himself as God. Praise God. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, Samba. He became a curse for curses one his hand on the tree that we may receive. Notice the purpose of Christ dying on the cross that we may receive the promise of the Holy Spirit by faith. It is by grace through faith once we believe in that which Christ did on the cross. First of all, believing that he is the Son of God sent by God our Heavenly Father who so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have everlasting life and that we may be reconciled forever to our Heavenly Father. And that is through the Spirit of God. For that which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of spirit is spirit. Praise God. That's why Christ said, unless one is born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born of water and spirit. Amen? If you're ready, my friend, please repeat after me. After me. And the Bible declares it, that we've all sinned. None of us are perfect. We've all sinned. We fall short of the glory of God. No one is perfect. It is not your religion. It's not your righteousness or righteous acts. None of us can save you, my friend. But it is in believing in the Son of God and what the Son of God did on the cross, died, was burned, was raised from the dead for your sins and my sins. Receiving Him in your heart, in my heart, individual, that saves us. That if we confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that Christ died and was raised from the dead, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that He is the Son of God, we shall not be shamed, we shall be saved. Amen? It is for this purpose that Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. And all who have sinned belong to the devil, for the devil has sinned from the very beginning. If you choose to walk in sin, the wages of sin is death. It's eternal death. Eternal death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ, our own Savior. My friend, if you are ready, please repeat after me. And you may have backslidden. You want to renew your faith in Christ. Please repeat after me. Say, I recognize Heavenly Father. I recognize that I am a sinner. And that my sin separates me from you, Heavenly Father. And today, I repent of my sins. I totally turn away from my sins. I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross. And that He's the Son of God. And that God the Father raised Him from the dead. I repent of all my sins, Jesus. I willingly confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I open the door of my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. Take charge of my heart. From this day forward. I renounce every covenant with the devil, with the world, with my flesh. I make a covenant with Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Take charge of my life from this day forward, Jesus. And I receive the free gift of the Holy Spirit to walk upon the will of God. Say, Holy Spirit, take charge of my life. Reveal Jesus Christ to me. Reveal the love of the Father. Come that I may be conformed to the image of the Son of God. Transform me. Change me into the likeness of Christ and the image of God. Amen. My friend, if you say that prayer, believe in your heart, confess in your mouth. The Bible declares that we have believed in Him, in the Son of God, and He who sent the Son of God, our Father. God gave the right to become children of God in the kingdom of God. You are a child of Abba. Your sins are forgiven. They are remembered no more. It's not man that forgives your sins. It's God who forgives sins. Because of the finished work of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah. Samba. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Do you know that angels in heaven, they rejoice when one soul, one sinner turns to God. Hallelujah. Samba. So we rejoice with the heavens for you. Who has made that decision even you who has repented if you are backslidden god bless you abundantly i'm gonna ask you to get a bible or a bible up 
the Holy Spirit is the best teacher as we read. We teach you the word of God. We reveal Christ to you and the love of our Father. And the Holy Spirit is going to teach you a new language. It doesn't teach you really. It's an impartation. God said language that is for you, specifically for you. And God is going to just resurrect. You didn't know it was there. God is just going to resurrect. That's the purpose for which you are created. And then you're going to move on to do the will of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Lord is going to lead you into worship, to worship in spirit and truth. Everything we do, we do in spirit. And prayer is in the spirit. Worshiping in spirit and truth. That's how you're going to gain believers. Uh, worships God and praise for God. We do not pray religious prayers. We pray in spirit. Now, it doesn't mean that when you are not speaking in tongues yet, you're not praying in the spirit. No. What it means is that uh, you are born again and your spirit is connected to the Holy Spirit. Yes, God. Now, speaking in tongues is a gift. I'm going to pray for whoever does not speak in tongues. Merciful God, I thank you. Holy Spirit, that you would impart in this people. King of glory. And I stand in the God, King of glory, that you would do an impartation, my Lord, my God. Oh, but those special tongues that you created each and every one, oh, King of glory, to walk in your will. Heavenly Father, let your will be done. Holy Spirit, take charge of every spirit, every spirit, King of glory, of man. Yes, Lord, renew their spirit, their souls. Hallelujah. Those who have made the decision to receive Christ, their spirits are already renewed. But Lord, that you, yes, give them the special language to pray in the spirit, to worship in spirit and truth. Strengthen us, most holy God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Pray in the spirit, pray in tongues, if you can pray in tongues even here online. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I decree and declare healing over each and everyone that has any kind of sickness or disease. Christ was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of God peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. And the name that is above our name, say all of joyful morning, beautiful urchins, the government of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Where there is anyone who has any heaviness. Christ says, come to me, all you who live on a heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Rest is in Christ Jesus. I decree and declare the peace of God that purses all understanding. To guard your heart and mind always. That those who are blind spiritually, that your blind eyes will be opened. Because that's the reason Christ paid the price on the cross to open the blind eyes. The eyes of those who are blind, that we may see in the spirit. I declare it in the name of Yeshua that the eyes of your understanding are going to be opened by the Holy Spirit. Reveal to you, Christ revealed to you, the scriptures revealed to you so many things through dreams, yes, through visions, that which God promised through Prophet Joel in Joel 2 80 and 2 2 Urabasana 17 to Urabasana in Joel 2 28 to 32. That in the last days I'm going to power up my spirit upon all flesh. Your daughters and sons shall prophesy, young men shall have visions, men shall have dreams, men and women shall prophesy. Oh yes, it came to pass. I can ask you 17 to 20 to 21. Starting from the day of Pentecost, there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we are getting into that very season, that very season. A mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit as has never been seen before. Yes, to open the blind eyes. We're not talking about the physical eyes, but the spiritual eyes, but even the physical eyes, because in the realm of the spirit. The spiritual things govern the things in the natural. That is what is called the supernatural. God puts his super on the natural. So therefore, I decree and declare that anyone has any kind of blindness, even physical blindness, deafness, yes, natural deafness, natural blindness or muteness, that you be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I rebuke the mute spirit, the blind spirit, the deaf spirit in Jesus' mighty name. I rebuke any kind of infirmity, sickness, and disease. He bows down to Christ in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Name that is above our names. Receive. Don't be a spectator. Receive. Don't let your mind idle. Be, be a participant in what God is doing. 
Don't be idle in your life. My friend, I've learned in my life as a believer and in ministry that when your mind is connected to the Holy Spirit and the one is ministering, that's how you receive the impartation. I've been under mighty men and women of God. Apostle Mountainari is our spiritual father. Pastor Daniel Carolina, Sandamu, those are our pastors. And I'm telling you that the grace that is upon the men of God as they move in the spirit is what you receive if you are attentive in the spirit. But if you are idle and looking around, seeing who is doing what, you are not going to receive. Those are some of, those are some of the distractions. Some of the distractions, the temptations of the enemy. The end time destruction to the enemy. Those are the strategies, temptations, accusations, criticisms, betrayals. Do not listen to what the devil is saying. Focus on Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. I decree and declare the peace of God that passes all understanding of God, our hearts, and my goodness. The love of God that transcends all knowledge to prevail in every area of our lives. I decree and declare the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, might and power to walk in the might and power of God. Not in our own might and power, but by the spirit of the living God. In Jesus' mighty name, shall every mountain be raised to the ground. Hallelujah. I don't know what mountain is before you. But I decree and declare that let every valley be exalted and every mountain be brought low in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Every mountain of death, poverty, lack, sickness, disease, struggle with sin and unrighteousness, struggle with thoughts, depression, repression, obsession, possession from the enemy, be destroyed by the power of the blood of Jesus. Every wall of Jericho be torn down in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We pray all this in the name that is above our names. Name of Yeshua, I'm here, our Lord and our Savior. And everybody say, Amen. God bless you abundantly, my friend. I'm gonna close. We don't we never want to close without giving you a chance to give to the work of this ministry. Again, this is the King Jesus Love of Castle Peace, uh, which is under King Jesus. We are in the Lubbock area, about five and a half hours away from uh, uh, Dallas. Our pastors are Pastor Daniel and Carolina Sandoval. And we are truly honored. I'm blessed to serve in this ministry and we honor and respect the men of God and the women of God. Amen. My friend, tithes a tenth of your gross salary. You can give your tithes, uh, but it is only to your local church. You cannot give tithes to a church where you do not belong. So if this be not your church, you should not give your tithes to this church. But if this is your church, or if you want to be a part of this church, you want to hear your testimonies, so whoever has accepted Christ as the Apostle, Lord, and Savior, and if you want to be a part of this church, please, you're welcome. Call me at 781-475-8262. That's my number. Send me a messenger message on this page. Or you can uh, send me a text message on that phone number or call me directly. If you need prayer, uh, we're going to agree with you in prayer. We're going to pray for you. Uh, and I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to meet your needs. Our God shall supply all our needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen? We're standing on this word. Now, you can give an offering of any amount as the Holy Spirit leads uh, to this ministry. In this ministry, we preach the gospel. We go to the nations. We preach the gospel locally in Miami. If you ever be in the Miami area, uh, please, you're welcome to any of those campuses in the Miami area or parent uh, church is in Miami and um, we have uh, branches uh, around the United States of America and one uh, in Dallas in the Dallas area King Jesus Dallas under which this uh, house of peace uh, serves uh, please you feel free feel free to uh, join any of our services you can also join online uh, on YouTube and on the Facebook uh, uh, ch uh, Facebook channels we minister online, and the Lord is going to bless you abundantly. So you can give an amount uh, as the Holy Spirit leads uh, of, of any amount, uh, and then um, uh, the Lord is going to bless you abundantly. We not only uh, preach the gospel, but we also cater to the needs of the people. 
we're standing on this word, my friend, as you get your tithe and offering, and you can give your tithe either online, uh, in online, text the word uh, Dallas, oh, wait a minute, text the word give, that changed, text the word give, and I'm going to give you the number, I praise the son of a living God, uh, the number that you would call uh, in order to uh, give uh, online. But you can send a check or money order. Send it to the address I'm going to give you. Uh, it is... Thank you, Heavenly Father. So I'm going to give you that number first. Uh, the number for, uh, uh, for King Jesus Dallas that you need. Uh, in order. It's one eight three three. So text the word give, not dollars, G I V E, to 1 921 If you're giving online, if you're giving online. And the system will ask you for a few things if you're a first time giver. Uh, probably your phone or your email, not your email, but I believe it's your phone. Uh, but the amount to give that is between you and God. And the Lord's going to bless you abundantly as you give. Now, the address is 4240. For those of you who want to make a check or money order to uh, King Jesus Dallas, write the check in the names of King Jesus Dallas. Send it to 4240 International Parkway. That is in the city of Carrollton, C-A-R-R-O-L-L-T-O-N, in Texas. That is in Greater Dallas Metroplex. The zip code is 75007. Amen? And the Lord's going to bless you abundantly as you give to the work of this ministry. We're turning, standing on this word in Malachi 3.10. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. And the tithes are a tenth of your gross salary. And it goes to your local church. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. God takes that very seriously. The purpose of, pay, of, of, of giving tithes is that there may be food. Notice that God says it is food. It is food for who? Not food for the pastors. A lot of people think, oh, we are feeding the pastors. Oh, they, oh, look at them. They are buying this and this. And. Well, the food is for not just pastors, even though we are supposed to take care of the pastors and the apostles, the prophets. But it includes taking care of the needs of the people in various parts of the world where we go, various parts of the world, even right here locally in the United States, we take care of the needs of the people. That includes clothing, food, and all kinds of things that they need. Scholastic materials for children going back to school. And so it includes all that. That's why it says that there may be food in my house. Take care of the orphans, the widows, those who are in need. Amen? Even widowers, praise God. The homeless, many people that are in need out there. So if we do that, Guess what God is going to do? He says, and try me. Now in this, this is the only time that God says, tempt, not tempt me, but really try me, test me. Because tempt is, God cannot be tempted. Try me in this. Test me. That's the right word. Test me. It's the devil that tempts. He says, try me now in this. Says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven. So this is the only time that God says, test me. Not that we do not have faith in God, but really God is saying, okay, you want to see uh, that I'm a faithful God? Do what I ask you to do. Test me. Test me. And you see if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and power out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. That is the abundant blessing. The abundant blessing that comes through Christ, our Lord and our Savior, when we are obedient the things of God. Amen? My friend, God bless you abundantly. I pray that you would prosper in all things. You'll be in good health even as your souls prosper in Jesus' mighty name. As you as you give in your tithes and offerings, uh, pray over your tithe and offering. Name your seed. Name everything that you put in the kingdom of God. It is between you and God. Say, God, I am being obedient. You say it according to your word. That's how you name your seed. To name your seed is not to complain before God. Oh God, you haven't given me this. You haven't given me that. No. Say, Lord, you say, bring all the tithes into the stores. Yes, even in the in the even the tithes. We're not paying taxes. We are being obedient to the word of God. 
And the Bible instructs us not to give out of necessity or gratitude, but with a cheerful heart. Let's talk about a cheerful heart, what we've been studying. A cheerful heart, a joyful heart. Hallelujah. So you name your seed and say, Lord, I bring all the tithes into your storehouse, even as you say, that there may be food in my house, that there may be food in your house, not my house, your house, Heavenly Father. And try, you say, try me now in this, Lord. I am trying you, even as you say, says the Lord of hosts, as you say, if I believe, I know that you're going to open, and also I'm, I'm trying to demonstrate how you name your seed. You promise that you open for me the windows of heaven and power out for me such blessing is that there will not be enough room for me to even receive it. Lord, I am naming this seed, whatever seed that you're putting in the kingdom of God. And I believe that, yes, Lord, and whatever you say in this word, that it is going to come to pass. A friend, I've seen blessings in my family because of obedience. And where I've not been obedient, yes, the reverse is true. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us, obe let us be obedient to the word of God. And we're going to see the blessings of the Lord. The blessings that come through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah, somebody. Just turn on one worship song and we're going to close. Oh, thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Can you increase the volume, please? And as we close a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're merciful. You're mighty to save. You're our deliverer. Our provider, Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Jireh, provider, Jehovah Rapha, a mighty healer. Jehovah Jireh, provider, who provides all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. I give you thanks and praise. Oh, thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. I trust you. I trust you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Who is your king? Who is the king in your finances? Who is the king of your life? Who is the king of kings? Yes, this is Jesus in every area of our lives. Amen? Amen. God bless you abundantly, my friend. Uh, may the God of peace himself sanctify you and I holy in spirit, in soul, and in our bodies. And that the return of Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we may be found a blemish, a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Yes, the bride of Christ, the Christ is coming back home, is without spot or wrinkle. And I pray that we will be found without spot or wrinkle. Among the wise, not the foolish, but is among the weak, not the tears. Among the sheep that hear the voice of God, through Christ our Lord and Savior, not among the gods. God bless you, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.